Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Uh, today we're working on one of my favorite rockets in my fleet, but first I wanted to say a big thank you. We did reach 25 Patreon supporters or patrons, and since we hit 25 patrons, that means at the end of this month I'll be giving away a high power rocket kit up to $100 in value. Initially I was thinking I would just pick something, but now I think I'm going to lay out a list of options and let Patreon people vote and see which rocket is their favorite and which one I'm going to buy and give away. So it's not too late if you'd like to join the Patreon. It's patreon.com slash rocket vlogs. The link is always in the description. If you want to be entered to win a high power kit, pick what high power kit's given away and all that and yada yada. Patreon.com slash rocket vlogs. You click the link in the description or you can click the link at the top corner. That should be sliding out right about now. Now back to the video's topic. Today I'm going to tell you guys the most important tool that you could have in your arsenal if you're getting into high power rockets, which is especially true if you're going to build fiberglass rockets. But first, let me introduce you to one of my favorite rockets in my fleet that has been half built for about five years now. If you're a real, real, real OG of this channel, you'll be familiar with this rocket. I think I'm going to make it appear right here. This is a six inch upscale of the SD's Dare Red Max. Dare is the proper pronunciation. I took German for two years in high school. It's super cool. I know you probably can't see all of it on the frame right now, but my favorite part about this rocket is that it has the appropriately shaped aluminum tip so that the nose cone is appropriately shaped. And being the upscaler, if you're familiar with my rocketry form handle, this speaks to me in ways that I cannot describe to have the right shaped nose cone on a Red Max this big. This is the six inch Red Max. It's all fiberglass, 3 16th beveled fins. Beautiful, it's so sick. And today we're going to be doing fillets on it. But first we're gonna do everybody's favorite activity, sanding. Look, I know the sanding channel meme is very hot right now. But I'm gonna to have to be frank with you. Sanding is like 90% of high power rocketry. It just is, that's all there is to it. But if you watch the video, you can go back and watch it if you'd like, it's not greatly produced. But uh, when I did the internal fillets on this rocket, I pulled the rear ring out and put the fillets in from the back, which is something I've never done before. And I had some epoxy running out on the edges here, which I'll get some close-ups for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, it's actually not as bad as I remembered it being, but it is still a little bit of a nuisance to have to sand them unless you have the godsend power tool that is the best friend of every rocketeer and that is wait a dremel and appropriate toolkit this is a beautiful gift to high power rocketry if you don't have one you need one now i know there's financial barriers to having power tools and i'm not trying to make anybody feel alienated but for the people that are building four inch, five and a half inch fiberglass rockets and they got K550s in them going, how do I do this? My fins don't fit. How do I widen the fin slots? This is gonna take forever. I advise you get a J415 next time and take the savings and buy yourself a very basic single speed Dremel. I run through these toolkits like Drano runs through your septic system. So I always buy the cheap ones. This is just a hyper tough 208 piece from Walmart. Don't use these cutoff wheels or garbage they'll wind up in your eyes and maybe be a little leery of these guys. These grinding bits and the flap disc and all the sanding drums and everything, perfect. Nothing wrong with them, fantastic. All these different bits and shanks and everything. Um, we're going to have to use the uh, one of the grinding bits because I'm now realizing the drum shank isn't in here. It's probably at my house on my other Dremel. Uh, anyway, this is like 20 bucks and I think the one speed corded Dremel is also maybe 35 or 40. I don't know exactly because I've had them forever, but I can tell you they have paid for themselves dividends. You guys have seen me use it a million times on this channel just in this past year. The fat boy, the fins didn't fit right. The Arcus, the fins didn't fit right. Getting epoxy everywhere, trimming the carbon fiber on the Arcus, all of that is done with a Dremel and it's so nice. It makes everything so fast, so simple good cutoff wheels, a diamond cutoff wheel, you can cut fiberglass fin slots. You can cut fiberglass fins if you wanted to. So that is my biggest piece of advice. If you are looking to get into high power rockets, especially big fiberglass rockets, but it can be useful on cardboard and everything else too. Drilling out plastic nose cones so you can run Kevlar through it and not use the sketchy loop on big nose cones. 
anything and everything the Dremel can do it. So if everybody asks, where do I start in high power rocketry? Obviously you start with a small kit and you go get your certifications and everything like that. But beyond that, when you're building rockets consistently and you're taking a lot of time out of your life doing these things, I promise you buying a Dremel is going to make this hobby so much more enjoyable for you. Unless you're one of those psychotic people that just enjoy sanding anyway. Hey, look, it's my dad. Dad, what's the most important power tool you could possibly have in high power rocketry? In high power rocketry? Yeah. Especially for fiberglass. Uh, sander? Yeah, well, I guess that's fair too. <laughs> oh. It kind of uh -huh. counts, yeah. yeah. That's what I was advising. Especially when you have, you know, kits where fins don't fit and stuff like that. Fin slots are too thin. I might just use the flapper disc because these are a lot less terrible than I remember. I thought it was just like this disaster that I was signing myself up for. So anyway, now I'm gonna cut to the footage of the classic sanding channel, sanding action, and then we're gonna do fillets. Look how nicely this nose cone fits. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of scary. It's not supposed to work like that. Remember kids, fiberglass is great for your rockets, but not great for your lungs. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this episode of Rocket Vlogs. As you guys can probably see the fillets don't look phenomenal because I was kind of rushing through them. Um, one of the perils of doing all of them at once, plus it was about, it's still about 90 degrees in here. And uh, if you have ever had epoxy flash here on you because of heat and humidity, I'm sure you'll understand why I was rushing. If you haven't had that happen, uh, I pray on your good graces that it never does. At any rate, Thank you guys very much for watching. We're gonna get this and my fat boy painted here pretty soon, but I just wanted to give you guys a little insight on what, uh, what I'm working on right now. I have a Aerotech K780 red line for this guy and an I600 red line for the fat boy. Hopefully flying both at one launch, I'm trying to get my dad to finish his Goblin upscale too, so we can just have ourselves an upscale SD's kit party at a Tripoli Idaho launch. At any rate, Thank you guys very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button uh, if you want to be entered to win the $100 giveaway rocket kit. Uh, all patrons, like I said, qualify. So patreon.com slash rocket vlogs as little as $5 a month gets you the opportunity. And for every quarter that we sustain having 25 or more patrons, I'm going to give, an, I'm going to give another rocket away. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.